Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. This weekend marks the uh, second anniversary of the beginning of this program, and I want to take a minute to thank all of my subscribers and all of the friends and all of the viewers that have supported this show uh, from its inception. I had hoped when we first started the Cannabis Corner, my goal was to uh, hopefully be a strong part of the movement and to help uh, cannabis get legal by this time. I figured we could probably have it done within a two-year time frame, but of course, everything that concerns the cannabis movement always has to drag at turtleneck speed, and all of us want it to occur at lightneck speed. So, But the uh, I want to thank all of you all for all of your comments, all of your suggestions, even all of the uh, comments about correcting my stupid mistakes when I make these videos and stuff. Uh, they're all appreciated. We take everything, we read every comment, and some we respond to, some we don't, but I want you all to know we do appreciate all of your support, and we hope you that'll continue. And once we get cannabis legal, then we can stop the show. If any of you don't like it, you'll just have to bear with us until that long. But uh, one of the main reasons that we can't seem to get cannabis legal in this country is because the American people are not allowed to express their freedom of choice and their freedom of liberty that's uh, en enabled to them by our Constitution, set up by our founding fathers and all. And this is probably the, the biggest reason why I've been in this battle for nearly 45 years, all of my adult life and uh, part of my teen years. And uh, this is the main thing behind all of that was because we knew this was something that was given to us being Americans. This is part of what you call being free in a, in a free country and given the right to choose and all and make the choices that you want to make for yourself as long as you're not harming somebody else. And uh, that was sort of the main reason this, uh, this program has given me a platform to not only discuss all the cannabis issues and and all the reasons why we shouldn't have this illegal, and it never should have been illegal in the first place. But it's, but it's allowed me to uh, meet a lot of really good friends that are involved in the movement, people like Casper Leach of Time for Hemp, uh, Dean Becker of the Truth Brigade, all of the different people that are involved in so many different, the LEAP officers, the law enforcement against prohibition. I mean, there's just so many people out there that are really devoted to this cause, and they, they put a lot of efforts into it and all, and, and I hope that the combined effort of all of us and, and all of you out there that use cannabis and smoke cannabis and your support and your antagonizing the powers that be in the legislative process, maybe we can get this done sometime before all of us die. But uh, you know, when we <clears throat> back in the early 70s when Nixon came across with his Controlled Substance Act in response to the Singles Narcotics Treaty of 1961, and the subsequent formation of the Drug Enforcement Agency, we all knew that this was a total infringement on our personal rights, our personal freedoms and liberties. And that's been our main, main cause from the beginning because we know this is a safe herb. We know that it has never killed anybody. We know that nobody's ever been sent to the hospital for an overdose. It doesn't deserve to be among the substances that are on controlled substance. It's not a public threat to anybody. It's not one that's going to be a problem of abuse or anything among society. It, it doesn't cause harm to anybody. We know that it doesn't need su medical supervision like a lot of the other drugs that are placed on Controlled Substance Act and all. It's just, this is a way of the government controlling our lives and it's absolutely wrong. All of the laws from the beginning, from the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act through the Singles Narcotics Treaty in 1960 and 61, and subsequently the Controlled Substance Act in the early 70s, all of these were contrived by an illegal process that did not follow our Constitution. And our founding fathers in no way whatsoever ever would let allow this to happen. And unfortunately, though, our government is run by a bunch of crooks and a bunch of crooked businessmen and a bunch of people who are power hungry and they that's what it's all about they want it's the control that 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 ability to control someone and have the power over them and that's why nothing's ever changed it's why the choice is given to the drug enforcement agency the very people that that are out there that get paid to enforce the cannabis laws and all that that's why they wrote the uh, the pathway up to legalization to go through them and this is wrong this is absolutely wrong the DA doesn't have a right to decide that I can use an herb or not and neither, neither does the government and so we we have to really 
keep this movement going strong and really convince people out there of what the truth is and, and that it was all based on a bunch of lies. And, and we all know that, that we have a strong case. The, uh, it, it doesn't take rocket science to, to, to realize that the cannabis movement is, is really a good and positive thing. I mean, we would get rid of all the street gangs that are out there selling cannabis on the streets that are a threat to to the public. That is a public threat, having these gangs out there, and, and not to mention the cartel gangs south of the border and all the murdering and, and vicious crimes and stuff that they do just to control the, the cannabis market coming to the United States. We know we can do better than that as a society, and the fact that this substance is, is way, way less harmful than anything that we've got legal, particularly cigarettes and alcohol that take out of, collectively about 700,000 people a year, and then the prescription drugs that are prescribed by doctors and that are abused by people and all, you know, these kill another couple hundred thousand people. We're, we're better than this to have cannabis included in this and all. It's just not, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't, it's not even sane thinking if you really sit down and look at all the different things that are going on. And it's we as the, the reason we cannot express our freedom of choice and all that is because the people have lost the ability to be the ones that control our government. If the people controlled the government like there's like they were set up to do from our founding fathers, they knew what was going to happen if the people lost control of the government. They knew that the government would explode into this huge monstrosity and and control every angle of your life. All these cameras everywhere, the the uh, law enforcement, the everything that, all the lives that we ruin year to year just from people getting arrested from cannabis and all, this is all a big power pull by the, by the people who are in charge. And it's so wrong. And this is what, the, this was one of the biggest fears of our founding fathers, people like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, all the original people that were part of our declaration and, and later our constitution. They feared these very things, they feared a group of rich bankers and rich people getting in charge and being able to control things and all things like the uh, the uh, money situation and 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 a drug enforcement agency. I mean, literally, this is an agency that preys on tax-paying citizens, hard-working citizens, just because they choose to use a safe herb that's much safer than anything out there. And this is absolutely wrong. We all know this is wrong. We, it, like we said, we do, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to, to understand that in any way whatsoever. In its simplistic form, a moron could understand it. And nobody that has ever been part of the cannabis movement or has used cannabis or has in any way been connected to cannabis has ever been able to understand how the government has been able to pull this off. They are just absolutely one of the slyest, sneakiest, and nastiest bunch of people that exist on this planet. And particularly when it comes to the freedoms and constitutions that we're born with here. That's the whole point of being an American, is that we can exercise our freedom of choice. And we're not being allowed to do that. And the repercussions from these laws and all the things that, that are in place that, that prevent us from being allowed to, to uh, exercise our freedoms and all, it creates many, many of the problems that we have in our society. I mean, you look, just look at the millions of people since the Controlled Substance Act was passed. I mean, since 1970, over 30 million people have been incarcerated for a year or longer for possession of cannabis in this country. Some even longer than that, depending on what they were caught with and all. And, and what happens when you arrest a citizen that if that's their only crime is that they've decided to possess cannabis and use it and all, it, what you've done is you've taken a productive member out of society and you've placed them into a situation where they become dependent on society. It, uh, we, these people aren't criminals. We're not criminal, criminals because we decide to use this herb, a safe herb. No, we're not. Just because a drug enforcement agency or a Controlled Substance Act exists and says that we're criminals and that we should be enforced, this doesn't mean that it's true. And certainly it's, it, it doesn't take rocket science, if you will. I hate to keep using that term, but it doesn't take rocket science to, to see through all of this and all the lies and and all the snafus that the government's pulled just to keep this substance illegal, not to mention all of the money. And we, of course, we don't have to say it enough about how much we're killing jobs and the economy in America by not having the hemp industry going. This was one of our mainstays from the dawn of time since this country was founded. Our founding fathers, all of them grew hemp. This was a very big part of society and, and had been all the way up until the uh, Controlled Substance Act was passed in 1937. 
and ex with the exception of just a brief intermission of bringing it back for the, during the war because we didn't have any rope and the Japanese were controlling the Philippines, the Philippine harvest and all that over there, the uh, different things that they were making rope from. So, I mean, when it seems like when the government was going to benefit from it, then everything was okay and how they came out with the Hemp for Victory campaign and, and you know, just the very video itself that they passed out to farmers and all to get hemp growing and all. I mean, it was a very positive thing. And, and the reason being is because it's a very positive industry and one that desperately needs to be brought back. One that could bring about all of our fuel needs in this country. We could excuse ourselves from all of these foreign countries that we buy oil from that hate us, basically, that in a, in a second would drop a bomb on us if we, if we give them the chance. And we don't need their oil. We, don't, we could generate thousands and millions of jobs and, and revenues here in this country just, just by that one thing being taken away in society, and that's the Controlled Substance Act, the thing that keeps marijuana or cannabis, whatever you like to call it, illegal. And we've got to do this. this, this the, most of all, this is, a, this is something that's at the core of our Constitution. It's at the core of what this country was founded on. And for us to just sit back and say, oh, well, well, we'll just have to dodge the cops and, and uh, you know, try to get medical marijuana legal. Well, it's not about medical marijuana. All of us that use cannabis, we've known from the beginning, way before medical marijuana even was an idea or even was brought about as an inception in any of these states, we all knew that cannabis had extreme medicinal benefits. People have known that for decades back in, into the latter parts of the 1800s and the 19, early 1900s up to the time that the Cannabis uh, Act was passed. People knew about the medicinality of the substance, but they knew that it was safe enough that it didn't require a doctor's prescription. It's not a harmful drug like the drugs that they have on controlled substance right now that are prescribed by a doctor. And this is where the fallacy lies. We, we don't need a doctor to give prescriptions. Certainly people should be able to use cannabis as much as they need for any medicinal problem they have. But, and also people who want to just smoke it to relax and kick back like they do when they have a martini or a beer or whatever, because this is their God-given right. It's, it's what basically defines us as a free country and being able to have our freedom of choice. And for the 50 million Americans that have been subjected to these, these laws like the controlled substance, which was founded by Nixon. I mean, come on. The biggest crony president of our time in, our, in modern times, and certainly in, during, in my early years and as a teen and all that, this guy was a crook. And anything that he came about with should be abolished. I don't care what it was. It's, he's, he was absolutely the biggest snake that we've ever had in the White House. And there's been quite a few of them. But he trumps all of them. And the, and the fact that we keep a controlled substance in a drug enforcement agency that was for, formed under his administration is wrong just in itself, just by the fact that he was the one that was the instigator and the one behind it and all. That should be enough reason regardless of what the cannabis uh, situation is. But the fact that this substance, this herb, this safe herb has never hurt anybody, has never killed anybody, and has never sent anybody to the hospital, we, we just don't have the right to have these unfair laws in place, these unfair laws that were contrived unconstitutionally. We don't deserve to have this type of thing going on to the, to the citizens of this country. We're, we're far better than that. We deserve better than that. We're not criminals. We're certainly more responsible than most of the people that use the substances that are legal, like cigarettes and alcohol and some prescription drugs to a certain level. We certainly have a better track record than any substance out there. I mean, requiring a person to go to a doctor to get a prescription for medical cannabis is about the equivalent of making them go get a prescription from a doctor for basil or oregano or some of the other herbs that people use day to day. They're just as safe. It's just as safe as that. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. This is just an effort by the big pharmacy companies because they know that once cannabis is made legal, that about 75 to 90 percent of all the prescription drugs out there that they control and make big profits off of, they know all of those are not going to be able to compete with a natural cannabis plant that has very little, if any, bad side effects. It's one of the safest things out there. You can just look at any one of these drug commercials that they run on TV just hand over fist. You can see, just listen to the side effects and all. And it scares me so bad when I, when I hear about all the side effects that some of these things that people are taking for maladies that are 
that could easily be controlled by other things way safer. I, I just can't even believe that somebody would even stoop to the point of taking the risk of taking those kind of substances. But these big pharmacy companies know that, they're, that their products and their livelihoods and their big profits and all are going to be threatened if cannabis is made legal because it is a safe herb and it's one that works very well with our natural bodies. We don't have, the reason you don't have the dangerous side effects with cannabis and you don't have the overdose is because our body is set up to work with cannabis. It's a natural substance like the other herbs and foods we eat. And, and it's ridiculous that anybody in this country, in this world, can have control over a plant, no matter what it is, particularly a safe herb. It's just absolutely wrong. Nobody made them God, and they, they want to take this gift of God that, that, that is it's so, such an important textile, it's such an important plant in so many ways. It, it, it can solve so many issues on this, that are going on right now in this country that are just plaguing our society, plaguing our economy, all of that. And, and it would be a very simple thing. It, it doesn't need to go before a public vote. It's not the public's, it's not anymore the public's decision to decide if a person like me can use cannabis or whether I don't. It's, the public has the right to not use it. Nobody's going to force them to use cannabis if it's made legal. It, just like people that don't want to drink, don't go buy alcohol or don't use cigarettes. They don't go buy cigarettes. They don't want to take prescription drugs. They don't go see the doctor and get prescriptions for them. This is your choice. And this is the way the cannabis should be. If you decide that you want to use this safe herb, you should be allowed to. You shouldn't have to get a prescription for anything. You can use it for any, any, anything you see fit. And as long as you're not out there causing harm to other people and all, it shouldn't be under any, any kind of regulation whatsoever. And if people want to set up businesses and, set, and grow and sell these products in these stores like we do all of these other products that this country generates and sells, then we can make the sales tax revenues on it. And if there's some licensing for business operations and all that, certainly there's tax revenues to be made. But for these counties and these different places to start you know, looking at medical marijuana as a boon to their tax and, their, and their, the tax rate that they're charging all is based on a cartel price. I mean, this is so, so absolutely wrong. We, we, we just are better than this as a society. I mean, yeah, let's, let's operate as a legal cartel and just keep the cannabis price up there so we can make all of these tax revenues. And, and really what needs to happen is just more responsible spending and get less government, less people in there to have to pay for. That's what needs to happen. If we just abolish the Drug Enforcement Agency and that portion of the prison system and the Department of Justice and Homeland Security and all that, that strictly, that strictly spend their day 24-7 fighting this cannabis movement and fighting, bringing cannabis in this country, we could save hundreds of billions of dollars of tax revenues in this country and then generate the trillion and a half dollars that the hemp industry itself would bring about. When you incarcerate somebody in prison, they're not a productive member in society anymore. And to take somebody that all, their one only crime was that they decided to use a safe herb and take them out of a job that pays taxes to this country and generates other revenues and stuff and buys products that other Americans sell and, and produce, and then we put them in prison and now we have to take care of them, we have to feed, house, and clothe them, pay people to watch over them and all that. That's the biggest bummer and biggest downer and biggest negative waste of money that I could that anybody could possibly dream of, and and we are so crippling ourselves just over this one issue, and it, and it's unnecessary. We don't need any kind of controls on cannabis. It's safe. It's it's been proven safe 50 million times a day every time somebody uses it, and they don't drop dead, and they don't have any particular problems with it and all. And this, this is just wrong. You can't say that about almost anything. I mean, caffeine kills 25,000 people out there a day. Look at the deaths from sugar, the complications of diabetes and all that that, that sugar drinks and stuff like that cause. One of the congressmen that in one of the states where they were talking about maybe decriminalizing the cannabis, and I said, well, I think we're sending a wrong message to our youth that we, we're more concerned about uh, sugar and sodas than we are about cannabis. Well, no kidding, Mr. Congressman. The reason that, that, that we are more concerned about sugar and products than we are cannabis is because these sugars are deadly and they do make people extremely sick and kill a lot of people. 
You can't say that about the cannabis. So get your brain connected and get current with the facts. Don't be reading all the bullshit lies that the government has put out because that's what it is. It's all BS and we, we as a society are better than that. We're smarter than that. We don't need to put up with this. And for people, for this to happen, we just need to start exercising our freedoms of choice. And we're born with these, these rights and freedoms as Americans. And the longer that we keep something like this illegal, the longer that we, that we fight this, this freedom of choice and all, we just whittle our constitution down, we whittle our sovereignty down, and we take away really what the founding fathers had set up for our country. We have a great country and we, we could really make this to our advantage and, and bring about a boon to our, uh, to our economy and make jobs for people. We could stop all of this hatred and crime and murder and stuff that, that's brought about when you have a substance that's illegal like cannabis. We, we learned absolutely nothing during the prohibition years and the Al Capone gangs and all that. I mean, <clears throat> we have a <clears throat> clear cut historical account of what happens when you keep a substance illegal. And why on earth we think this is any different, I, for the life of me, I don't understand. At least the only difference I can see is that the cannabis herb is a million times safer than anything we've got out there that's legal. So I thank all of you for our support of the Cannabis Corner. We're going to keep this fight going. And I want the show to end when we get stuff legal. And if we can get cannabis legal, I will not need to do this show anymore. We'll have to go on to some other type of cause maybe or just be relish in the fact that we finally have restored our constitutional rights and our freedoms of choice. Keep up the fight. And once again, I thank all of y'all on the second anniversary for viewing my videos. And I hope you continue to do that. And I hope you'll keep up the fight and keep up the pressure on our Congress and all of the people right now that we have to go through to get this substance legal. But uh, I appreciate all of your efforts. And I thank you for joining the Cannabis Corner.